Hey everyone, welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technically disadvantaged. If you find these stories entertaining, do me a favor, click like and subscribe so you don't miss any future stories. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got some stories for you. My bartenders are stealing cash. Prevent it so I don't have to fire them. We see this a lot, and I'm not sure what the owners and management are thinking. Maybe employees are hard to find, or maybe they like the employee even though they're a thief. This particular customer had video evidence of several of his bartenders pocketing cash. The customer gives them money. The cash drawer opens. They stick the cash in their pocket, and then take change from the drawer and give it to the customer. Why wouldn't you fire them and call the police is a mystery to me. But this customer was reasonably successful and had the means to pay for what he wanted. He already had a pretty sophisticated security camera system and wanted our software to interface with this camera system. To accomplish this, he needed to get us in contact with the developers of the camera system software and explain to both of us exactly what his plan was. And this was his plan. When a sale is made, send a copy of the receipt to the camera system so it can display on the screen. With a timestamp, making an easy reference for the person reviewing the video. This isn't embedded into the video, rather it's handled more like subtitles. This gives you an easily searchable reference for any time cash changes hands. Display a series of codes on the screen that the camera must detect and acknowledge before the POS software can proceed. The goal here was to make sure that every step of the transaction was clearly seen by the cameras. The following are when the codes will be displayed. 1. Press the button to begin closing the check. 2. Selecting the payment type. 3. Accepting the payment. 4. Giving change if any is due. The purpose of the second part was to make sure that any time the bartenders handled money it was clearly seen. This would require an unobstructed view of the screen which would also make the cash drawer easily viewable to the camera. It's extreme but I suppose in a perfect world it might work. Also, in even a less than perfect world you can just fire your crooked bartenders that you already have on video pocketing cash rather than putting it in the drawer. We ended up doing the first part of his plan, but neither we nor the camera software developer were willing to entertain the guaranteed support nightmare of his second part. That's just so many points of potential failure that will bring the system to a halt. Neither of us wanted to put ourselves in a place where we'd have to support the inevitable failures. I hope he eventually chose to fire his bartenders. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand that. I mean, I guess I can understand upping the security system a little bit so that, so that you can catch these guys. But it sounds like your system was already picking up the fact that they were taking cash from a customer, opening the drawer, pocketing the cash, taking change out of the drawer. You already know this is going on. You already know who's doing it. You can see it. Eliminate the problem. It's that simple. Our point of sale tablets are missing. You owe us a refund. In the early 2000s, we had a customer who wanted to be cutting edge and use wireless tablets. These were expensive and quite revolutionary at the time. This is also back when we were willing to risk selling hardware, so we sold them 10 of these things. I can't remember the brand now, but they were blue and silver and ran Windows 2000. Battery life sucked too, but he didn't care because it was just so cutting edge. Because of the battery life issue, he purchased more than he needed so he could have them in charging stations in many convenient locations around the restaurant. I'll admit, the concept was really cool at the time and these tablets really looked futuristic, and that's what he was going for. But do you know who else thought the tablets were cool and futuristic? The customers and the employees. After just a few months, we get a call that half of the tablets have been stolen, and that we owe him a refund for selling him tablets that can be so easily stolen. The salesperson is trying to help him understand that stolen property isn't our responsibility, but he'll hear none of it. When asked what we should have done to prevent it, he tells the salesperson that the details are our responsibility because we're the tech experts. Unfortunately, he convinced us to offer a six-month, no-questions-asked refund, so he sends the remaining five back to us. Because these were hot items, we were able to easily resell them used at cost, so at least we didn't lose money. I'm glad we were mostly out of the hardware business now. First of all, somebody must have been really desperate for a commission that month to offer a no-questions-asked refund policy like that. Second of all, there should always be a stipulation that theft and acts of God and things like that are not your responsibility and way beyond your control. User is so incompetent with tech that she repeatedly puts a laptop in tablet mode and resets it to factory defaults. So this one happened the last week I was at my old job. 
so I really just laughed it off. Me equals me, suck equals my successor, user equals user. I had successor in training, and as it was my last week I let him handle everything, and I solely acted as a resource in case he had questions. One of our engineers, user, had requested a laptop to replace her NUC. Next unit of computing is what that stands for. I guess it's a little little boxy laptop type thing that has the whole software system on it, but it's easy to travel with. So she could do home office from time to time. This was approved by her superior. My successor had installed the laptop, and I checked, and every configuration was correct, and delivered to user. User got an email from us saying that she should check if everything is to her pleasing on the laptop and then copy all the data she had stored locally over to the laptop, then have the NUC return to us. A few days go by and then user calls. Yes, hi, I just started my laptop for the first time and how do I access my emails? Successor. Have you opened your VPN? How do I do that? Successor face palms already. User, you got a documentation and a how-to with screenshots on how to connect to VPN. Yes, yeah, sorry, but I'm terrible at IT. I don't understand that thing. Okay, can you open TeamViewer and give me an ID so I can remote into the machine and show you? How do I do that? There's a link on the network folder. Just go to Network Path and double-click it. Sorry, I'm terrible in IT. How do I access that? Meanwhile, Successor had put her on speakerphone so I could listen in. We hear her talking to someone on the other side, and then we hear the woman that's next to her. She took over, and Successor remoted in and noticed that somehow, User had set the laptop into tablet mode. Of course, User claimed to be innocent, and that it has been like this since she first turned it on. Successor changed it back to normal and set up her VPN. We thought that was it, but no. Two days later, user called again. Yeah, hi, I just turned on my laptop, but it's looking strange again, and I can't access my email. Okay, I put a link to TeamViewer on your desktop last time. Could you open it? Sorry, I can't find it. Okay, could you open up a browser maybe and visit TeamViewer.com? No, sorry, I'm lost. I don't even find a browser on here. Hmm, let me think. Could you maybe give me your private email and I send you the direct link to TeamViewer? I don't own a private email. <laughs> now Successor and me both facepalm at this, but oh well. I'm sorry, but without the ability to remote in, I'm afraid you'll have to come by so we can have a look. But I'm at home? I'm supposed to work from here today. Yes, but as you said yourself, this is not possible for you right now, and in order for us to make it possible, we need to access your laptop. User wasn't happy and started swearing at this point, so Successor hung up on her. An hour later, User knocked on the door. Here's the laptop, now fix it! Successor had a look and noticed that, indeed, she had put the laptop back into tablet mode. He reverted that and then noticed that all her programs were gone. Also, the network did not work nothing. In fact, this laptop had been reset to factory defaults. Successor went on to confront User but she just threw a tantrum and claimed innocence. Fine, I'll reinstall it. Here's a temporary laptop for the time being. It would be done in a couple hours. Per my recommendation, Successor also informed her supervisor at that moment about what had happened. Turned out her supervisor did not give her permission to work from home that day, so she got reprimanded on the spot as well. Successor reinstalled the laptop. We tested it completely rebooted several times, and he returned the laptop to her after setting up her VPN while she was next to him. One day later, the phone rings. It's user. Yeah, hi. What is with this crappy laptop, guys? Again, there's nothing on it. No programs, and the tablet view, as you said, is on again. This is when Successor lost it. Well, then fix it. You seem to be tech-savvy enough to turn it on and even to reset a laptop back to factory default. I won't fix your laptop again. Bye. And he hung up, then informed her supervisor. <laughs> Sadly, this is where the story ends, as I have my last day after this, but apparently, of what I've been told, she just returned the laptop the week after and continued to work in office with her NUC. Wow, 
I can't tell if she was that incompetent and messing around with things that she shouldn't have been messing with, or if there was some software bug that just kept reverting things. I can't imagine what the software issue would be, but if any of you guys know, let me know. Fixed the system and got put in jail anyway. Some years ago, I forgot to pay a traffic ticket. Oops. And discovered that there was a bench warrant out for my arrest when I was pulled over. With my two older children in the car. And found my children getting a ride home in a police car. They thought it was cool. And I got a ride to the local jail. The cops were friendly. I was embarrassed and laughed at myself for being dumb. And then we got to the jail for processing. Photos, fingerprints, and then the guards were struggling with the booking system. So these words actually came out of my mouth. I work in IT. Maybe I can help? <laughs> they looked at each other and had me lean in. I walked them through setting up their new printer. And then was escorted to my holding cell until my wife was able to bail me out. The judge called me a bit of an idiot. I agreed and paid the fine and court costs and towing and storage. About $1,000. I told the story at work only to be reminded of the tech support creed. Never, ever, ever give tech support outside of work. Too long didn't read, helped fix jail computer system, got locked up anyway. No good deed goes unpunished. Although, I try to be a nice guy too. I probably would have helped get myself locked up too at that point. Oh, you need help booking me? Sure, let me help. Overheating modem. Like my last story, this one takes place over 20 years ago at Big V. C is for customer. C is for customer. C calls in saying his modem isn't working. I go through all the troubleshooting steps before the guy tells me this. The last guy told me the reason my internet wasn't working was because my modem was overheating. But I did what he said and now the modem isn't working. Why can't you fix this? I pull up the notes from the last call that C made into support and I kid you not, this is what they said. Advised customer their modem was overheating and to drill vent holes into the modem. <laughs> Let that sink in for a minute, guys. You read that correctly. The last tech told C to drill holes into his modem. So C did so. Straight through the modem. Because he was told by a tech to do that stupid stuff, and the tech actually noted it, we had to send C a new modem. I advised him not to drill through the new one. Note. The tech that told C to drill holes in his modem was evidently disgruntled and had told several customers to either do dumb stuff to the equipment or would actually make things worse before blaming their operating system and advising them to call Microsoft before walking off the floor and out the door. Disgruntled isn't the word. This guy was looking to get fired and collect unemployment or something. I don't care how mad I get at a company. I don't think I could ever have customers just trash their own equipment like that. I mean, you know, people get under my skin, but I'm not going to deliberately have them trash their equipment or hurt their loved ones or whatever. That was r slash Tales from Tech Support. Hey, if you made it this far, do me a favor. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and oh yeah, click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fat guy with the beard telling you stories. See ya.